brothers and sisters, welcome to another edition of our ongoing study on the book of Ephesians. Remember, the book of Ephesians is the kingdom bill of rights for believers. And the question is, why is it that the church world doesn't know about the book of Ephesians? And why is it that what the church does is contrary to what is in the book of Ephesians? The answer is simple. Tonight, I'm going to share with you some of the things that is responsible for why the church has three believers of the identity in Yeshua, Jesus, and the kingdom, and rather turn people to members of churches and members of denominations. And it's a game. The enemy played it on the church while men slept. Tonight, the veil will be taken away. Just stay with us. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am. Let your name be glorified and just bless us with understanding of the things that are freely given to us. That your name may be honored and glorified in Yeshua's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you know what I will have shared this evening. I shared it in the morning. Uh, You know, I think uh, maybe nobody noticed. Because what we do is night and day, night and day. We're following the pattern in the book of Genesis. Elohim counts time night to day, night to day. And what we shared in the morning will have been simply what I will share this evening. I will have shared what I shared last night. I'll share it again, expound on it this morning. So in order to make sure that we correct ourselves, that we don't go far away to from the original plan, what I'm going to do today is to just kind of let us have an understanding of why the church world does not teach the, the you know the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians in its fullness. Why you will have noticed some cherry picking. People go and pick from chapter six about prayer and spiritual warfare, the weapons of our warfare, the equipments we need to war. Then they leave other parts of that chapter 6. Why people can pick chapter 2, cherry pick it, we are saved by grace through faith, and that's all they know of Ephesians. Ephesians is a body of truth, complete in itself. It's the bill of rights for everyone in the kingdom, where you got to know everything about our election. We are chosen in Yeshua before the foundation of this world. And then the mechanics, that's chapter 1, and the mechanics of it, how did it happen? We are saved by grace through faith, chapter 2. And he has paid it all. We used to be sinners, but now we are saints. We used to be far, we are now we are brought near. Now we are members of the family of Elohim. And chapter 3, you know, builds on that to tell us about aspects of identity and the reality that when the church becomes what it ought to be, the church will demonstrate to principles and powers in heavenly places the manifold wisdom of Elohim. Brothers and sisters, stay with us on this conversation. And so the question is, what happened? What happened was prophesied by John the Beloved. In the book of Revelation chapter 17, John saw a vision. And in the vision, Yeshua told him something that will happen. Revelation 17, 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the judgment of the great whore, whore, prostitute, harlot, the great whore that seated upon many waters. Water stands for humanity. The great whore that sits upon, you know, many waters, the system that is corrupted, that is unfaithful, that is not the real church of Yeshua that will control humanity across the world. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. They cohabit. It's not faithful to Yeshua because it's not part of Yeshua. The kings of the earth, they love the pomp and pageantry of this system. And he says, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. Her ways that look like gospel, look like church, but it's not that system. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Take note. The woman, who is a whore, sat on a scarlet-colored beast, which stands for government of the world, which stands for political power, a religious entity, rode on a political entity. Just stay with us. 
The beast, he says, is had full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. That's the beast, the system, seven heads, ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations, full of abominations, certain things that are done supposedly as church that are abominable in the sight of Elohim and filthiness of our fornication because it's not, you know, a product of a union with Yeshua, but one that tries to pretend it is part of Yeshua's bride. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. You know Babylon? Babylon is a city that has types and symbols that we, we need to consider. There are two great places, two great nations that have had dealings with the people of Elohim, the Israelites, Egypt and Babylon. In Egypt, Israel was in captivity, but it was a different type of captivity. Pharaoh, because of Joseph, gave them a portion called Goshen. So the people lived in Goshen. And when a pharaoh rose who didn't know Joseph, what happened to that pharaoh? He became wicked. He began to oppress them. And so the people were made to do hard labor. So they would live in Goshen. They would go to Egypt in the morning to do work and labor and go back to Goshen. They were separate. They were not integrated. And that's why on the day of the Exodus, it was easy to judge Egypt and Israel that was in Egypt was spared. They were in Egypt, but they were not of Egypt, just as the church today. We are in the world, we are not of the world. So what happened to Babylon on the other hand, when Babylon with Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar and all the bad guys carried Israel into captivity, what did they do? Did they give Israel the luxury of being separate from the people know they introduce a system called integration a system whereby they made the Israelites eat Babylonian food take Babylonian names integrate into Babylonian culture so that they will forget where they came from that's why they try to do that to Daniel and the three Hebrew children gave them Babylonian names try to give them Babylonian food so Israel or the Jews what they experienced in Babylon was assimilation. As much as what France did in its recent history, France goes to a land, it assimilates the people. So if you are, if the French govern you, you are French. You could go to Paris anytime. You didn't need a visa. You didn't need a border. You were integrated. Brothers and sisters, that Babylonian system, watch it. It became the very thing that the enemy used to give the world a false religious system that is exploding at the seams today in our generation. The return of the Lord is nearby, and Babylon is going to go to the height of its perfidy in trying to project itself as a church system. And listen, the name was Mystery Babylon. In other words, there was a natural Babylon. This one is Mystery Babylon, religious Babylon, the Babylon that pretended it was the bride of Yeshua, the false church system that is all over the world. If you mention church today, what do people remember? It is the big cathedrals, the big buildings. It is the purple color that people wear, the scarlet, the, the tombs, the, the religious rituals. Especially in this season, people are going to flock to see a baby in a manger because their consciousness has been chucked, it's been chucked off their consciousness that he's no longer a baby in a manger. He didn't ask you for any bad day. Men have given a bad day and the idea idea is to trap people in the baby in the manger so that they will never know that he resurrected, he died at the cross, he resurrected, he ascended to heaven, he is God, he's going to come back as a lion of the tribe of Judah. The consciousness of people is taken away. They caught up in commerce, in industry, in religious activities. Those who don't go to church at all throughout the year, this is the week they'll go to church. One, for some people, one, for some people, two. And all the time, they own themselves. But listen, Mystery Babylon the Great. That's one title. The next one is the key to what is happening worldwide. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. 
the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. So, mystery Babylon is not just in one church or an entity that people like to name. Today, he calls it the mother. In other words, every religious system supposedly being done in the name of Christ, but does not live, does not understand the mystery of Yeshua, does not understand the mystery of the body, the church, the spiritual body, the spiritual body of Yeshua in the earth dream, that is not teaching people to know their head and grow up into their head in all things and prepare them for the world to come. Any system so called that keeps people's eyes on the world and the things of the world and political power and grab it and all that stuff, that that is mystery Babylon manifested there. We're coming to a story. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Go check. Religion has been responsible for murder of countless number of people across the world. With the blood of the martyrs of Yeshua, when I saw her, I wonder with great admiration. You may want to go and read the Fox's book, book of Martyrs. You may want to download a copy on the internet or other one and read it in this season. The Fox's Book of Mothers will help you. But what is the point we are making? Listen, less than 70 years after Yeshua uh, you know, rose and went to heaven, he visited the earth rim again. And one of the things he did after assessing the churches in Asia Minor was to take John in the spirit to show him what will happen. So Revelation 17 was a great insight into the future that was shown to John the Beloved. And what happened? Brothers and sisters, let me just give you a little bit of church history that will help you to understand why you need to study the book of Ephesians. And after that, the book of Philippians. After that, the book of Colossians. These three books were among the books that Paul wrote from the when he was in prison. And we need to have studied to know the master plan of the church is detailed. What the church is, the people of Elohim, the redeemed of the blood, who they are, how they ought to conduct themselves, the victory that has been procured for them, how they should live by grace and grace alone, how they are the one new man, the Gentiles who have been brought into the family of Elohim, that there is now the, the, the true what Yeshua accomplished at the cross, both Jews and Gentiles have access by one spirit to the Father how this system that man men invented on earth has essentially taken it away and that's what Mystery Babylon is all about, so what happened John saw this thing about AD 95, which is a little less than 70 years after Yeshua went to heaven. That's when he was shown this picture. So what happened? Starting with the first century, the second century, things happened. What was the first thing that happened? The Nicolaitan order came in. The Nicolaitans were people Yeshua said their deeds I hate. In, Gen in Revelation chapter 2, two places, I think it's verse 6 and verse 15, please cross check, he said, I hate their deeds. Who are the Nicolaitans? These are people who say, well, all this thing the Lord told us that leadership is serving, serving the people. They should be like him. No, people will disregard us if we are, if we are like them. You know, Yeshua was so simple. The day they came to arrest him, it was so simple that they didn't know whether it was James or John that they had to hire Judas Iscariot, an insider, treasurer of his ministry, to identify him, positive identification. Simplicity. So, as early as the first century, some of the people who were supposed to advance the church of Yeshua and the gospel, they were tired. They didn't want that simplicity. They wanted pomp. They wanted passion tree. They wanted to wear scarlet robes, special robes, special, you know, attire, so that they will become like leaders of the people in the sense of bosses. They will be like people who have conquered the people so that the people are subdued, their identity taken away, and they are like flotsam and jetsam. They don't know who their God is. They know the man of God. They know the woman of God. They know the church leadership. That They, they, they become like a screen between Elohim and the people. So they become grandchildren of God. Men and brethren, listen to this. That system started in the first century. 
And that is why if you go to the church history, you notice something strange. You may have seen it until now that I'm sharing with you for some of you. The very structure Yeshua put for his church, the structure that will guide his church, Paul spoke, and tomorrow we're going to talk about it, like the fivefold and the unity of all saints, you know, which is what Ephesians 4, 1 talks about. And the fact that the church is an organism, not an organization, as early as the first century, men who were supposedly church leaders have begun to drift away. For instance, a man called Diotrephes began to mistreat John the Beloved, the only patriarch, the only one who saw Yeshua who was alive at this time, that he would write a letter to receive people. He would say, who are you? Because he wanted preeminence. That love of preeminence drove men towards abandoning the leadership structure that Yeshua gave to his church, which is a structure that was organic, like we're going to see tomorrow. The fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers working together to grow what is called the Melchizedek priesthood. Mm -hmm. And what did happen? They began to put it aside to begin to look for titles. So the result is as early as the second century, what you begin to see in the church is bishops. Now, Bishop, is it in the Bible? Yes, of course. Some people make the mistake of saying bishops are not in the Bible. Bishop is in the Bible. But what was in the Bible was a bishopric that was holy. And what is it? First Timothy chapter 3. It says, if any man desire to, you know, the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. Say bishop, then he gives you the qualification. Bishopric is of the Lord, but it is for people who are kind of ruling elders. If you are like an overseer of three, four, five ministries, in order to integrate the leadership structure, the administrative system to show that you are the one leading, you ask the elders of the church and you are conferred, you are consecrated as a bishop over the church. It was a place of for people who are elders ruling, exercising administrative authority. So but what happened is that there was a twist to that. It is by desire. The Lord does not normally, apart from maybe a leader like Paul the Apostle, took Timothy, appointed him bishop of Ephesus to oversee the work he had done, the awesome work he had done, part of which you can see in the book of Acts chapter 19, a lot of things that Paul did as a result of ministering for two years in the house, in the school of Tyrannus to build up the church and make sure that all Asia hear the gospel. Brothers and sisters, that's where the sons of Sceva did that thing they did. All the things, that's where Paul dealt with the, you know, the spirit of Diana, the principality over Ephesus. So he said, Timothy, take care. Of the church here. Titus, take care as the bishop of the church in Crete. You know what? He appointed them. And bishopric is by desire. What happened? Men of who sought honor and glory, they began to take the bishopric as throne. They build special throne that stays on the altar and only them sit there. People come to bow before them, call them my Lord and all that. It didn't start today. It's all part of Mystery Babylon. They move towards Mystery Babylon. The corruption of the church went on because the fivefold is not by self-desire. It's by Yeshua appointing whom he will. So that process that began the second century, by the third century, it was obvious it was going to lead them into crisis compromise because you valued your glory you could compromise with the nobles and kings and in the fourth century the compromise went, came to a head the bishops of that era they couldn't stand the, the the persecution that rome was giving to the church and so when a man rose Constantine, who seemed to have interest of the church because his mother Helena was, you know, a Christian and seemed to have interest, they, they simply grabbed him. And before you know it, by AD 381, starting with that edict of toleration in the city of Milan between AD 310 to 311, 
You know what happened? He said, we now tolerate you. No more persecution. All the killing because you're a Christian, stop. They tolerate you. The people shouted, hooray. They began to build big churches. They began to come out of the cold, began to come out of darkness. And before you know it, the, starting with Constantine, the nobles of Europe began to go to church. So they needed to build cathedrals for them. And since the popes, I mean, the, 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 the political leaders, the nobles of Europe, all big colors carry their crowns so you also need to make your priesthood look heavy look great look dazzling and before you know it by 381 under emperor theodosius there was no more daylight between the church and the state they went into a marriage now you know one thing you can't marry a wife whose husband is alive you have to either kick him out of the way or separate him from her by what we call a hard divorce. So what happened? How can Rome marry the wife of Yeshua, the bride of Yeshua? Rome had effectively seduced the church to forget its head and to go into a new union. Mystery Babylon was confirmed. Now, people talk about that as if it's only Rome. No. He called it the mother of harlots. And you know what it means? Even the protestant movement that arose out of protest against Rome carried the DNA of the mystery Babylon. That DNA is what you see now exploding where church is done without regard to the master plan that Elohim gave to Paul the Apostle to document. So people do church and that's why you don't no longer hear a proper articulation of the Pauline epistles which is the master plan of the church. So you now use all kinds of human ideas to build ABC churchianity resulted. Attendance, building, cash. The result is that people go to church, they don't know God. They don't know the mystery of their redemption. Even when they profess that they know him, in works they deny him, being reprobate. And the result is people are not pressing into the fullness of Yeshua. Rather, they are pressing into fullness of their leader. So, people come. The first thing people come to church, they begin to receive cactism on how essentially to be better church members, not better Christians, not better kingdom citizens, not better ambassadors. They are not taught about their liberty in the Lord, which is in the book of Ephesians, the bill of rights that neither male nor female in Galatians, but everyone who is redeemed by the blood has been called to serve the Lord. Those things are set aside. So today people come to church to become members of the church, members of the man or woman of God, they be, to become, you know, so sold out to things that are actually contrary to the gospel. Brothers and sisters, this background is necessary. So all things work together for good. What we have taught this night, we taught it in the morning. And now, in order to make sure we do not outpace ourselves, we have to stop for the Lord to give us this brief church history to see why we need to go back to the Pauline epistles, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, uh, first Timothy, Second Timothy, First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, Philemon, Hebrews. Why we need to get back to these books that constitute half of the New Testament to understand what the church is, what is accepted, what is not accepted, so that we do not in any way become partakers of this mystery Babylon that is exploding. The Lord is coming back. The King is coming. And he will require of us, did we walk according to the master plan? Did we build according to the master plan? Or did we build our own fancies and ideas? And one of the things the Lord will achieve in these 22 days is to cause us to get the master plan. When we get it, understand it, we will enter his rest. And brotherly love will explode. In other words, the theme for 2022, which is enter into his rest, Hebrews 4.10, and also, let brotherly love continue, Hebrews 13 verse 1. The way to enter there is what we are going to be discussing this period of time. Welcome to the journey. 
Let's get it done. Will you share this video? Will you listen to it on and on and ask yourself a question? Is there any iota or mystery Babylon that is inside of you, whether known or known? And the Bible says, come out from among her, my people. That was what Yeshua said was the end. Come out of her because her sins have come up to heaven. Listen, one of the things that will happen in the time to come when the church is raptured in during the great tribulation is the day Elohim will judge mystery Babylon. And the very governments, the very political system that he used to come onto power is the very system that will destroy this apostate church system today that is not based on getting people to know who they are that we are the spiritual body we are the church church is not what you go into it's not the building you go into on certain holidays church is not the the rituals you do on certain holy days in quote it's not those things that's not the church the church is us we are the body and each of us we need to encounter the king the head grow up into him and grow up into one another Brothers and sisters, this requires some radical taking away junk from our mindset and radical embrace of truth that will set us free. And that's what the polite epistles do generally, including the book of Hebrews and especially the book of uh, the, the epistle to the Ephesians, which we are studying and we'll study it all the way to Saturday this week. By the time we finish, for those who truly open their hearts, you're going to see a level of liberty in the spirit you never knew was possible. And the Lord will begin to take away all the worry and anxiety, all the skull doggery, all the little you know, things people do, and you can rest in him. You can rest in him and soar like the kingdom eagle that you are. You know what? This evening, by the grace of the Lord, okay, let me just pray now and then I make an announcement. Father in heaven, I pray that this message will bless your people. Use it. You say we shall know the truth. John 8.32, which is what you are doing. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Set everyone free and let your people receive the glorious liberty of sonship as they study the book of Ephesians in Yeshua's name. Amen. So let me invite you this evening, if you are in the UK area or the, the G GMT, UST uh, standard time, please come along with us by 11 o'clock. We're going to be to the third night of our ongoing study of the book of Ephesians. 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. till 12.30 a.m. Come along if you have time. If you don't have time, where you are, you can pray. Just lift up your heart. Meditate over Ephesians chapter 2, you know, I mean chapter 3, and all through the night, and then tomorrow. By the grace of the Lord, by this time tomorrow, I'll come to Exposite Ephesians chapter 4 for you. We're going to continue to do what is needful to receive from the Lord. Please share this video and encourage people. Remember, January 6, 7, 8, 9, 4 days is Open Gate 2022. There are conferences every year, international conferences, but the one that starts second weekend of every year for years now is open gate where the body of yeshua the general assembly of the firstborn the council of the remnant from across the world we gather together because of the current pandemic we're going to be on zoom and by the grace of the lord you are invited plan to be there plan to make it and to connect with other people now make sure you share this video and let's meet by 11 o'clock i bring up thank the lord for the brethren in south africa they met yesterday and they're going to be meeting those in east africa uganda and kenya they are meeting those in the middle east hopefully they are meeting some of people in uh, USA, they joined us, and the Caribbean Basin, they joined us yesterday. If you want to join us, praise the Lord. You want to do what is works for you, praise the Lord. But you know what? We love you, and we pray that the Lord will truly deliver to you truth that sets free. Welcome. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Destiny, again for being with us.